Hi guys, here's a quick overview of the Powerbox Systems iGyro 3E and how it works. Let's start by explaining what a gyro actually does. Does it fly the plane for you? No, sadly not. Does it make the plane knife edge or hover hands off? No. Is it an autopilot? Well, no. A gyro acts like the suspension on a car. It just gets rid of those bumps in the road, or in our case, the bumps in the air caused by the external influences such as wind or thermals. The objective is therefore simply to make the plane fly as smooth and as consistently as it does first thing in the morning when we go to the field and there's absolutely no wind. You increase or decrease the gain until the model is perfectly stable, even in windy conditions. The gain is how much throw on each surface the gyro can use to rectify those unwanted wobbles. Specifically, when the gyro detects that the plane is being thrown off its path and it wasn't you that asked it to do that, i.e. the pilot, it was therefore an undesirable movement. There wasn't a stick input, therefore the plane did it on its own. The gyro is therefore going to counteract it, so as it continues on its path. All this is done blisteringly quick, and once set up correctly, it feels like you're flying on a perfectly calm day, even though you're not. On to the gyro itself. The Powerbox systems have three different gyros on offer. The iGyro SRS is designed to work with SBUS receivers or satellites. It's their top-end gyro and it can be used either directly on servos or on a power box unit. It's a three-axis gyro so it can control independently ailerons, elevator and rudder. An advantage of this top-of-the-line iGyro SRS is that it can be used with the power box system's GPS sensor which allows you to increase or decrease the gain automatically depending on the speed of the model. The iGyro 1E is a single channel, very simple, very small and compact version of the 3E that we're going to be showing in this video. This 3E is a very simple, again, gyro which goes in between the receiver and the servos. You can reverse each channel individually by pressing the single button on the gyro and the gain itself is adjusted through a channel on your radio. That's all there is to it. Installing the gyro. As mentioned, the 3E is a very simple and little gyro to install. It simply is located in between the receiver and the servo for each of the channels that you want the gyro to control. You'll need to add one extra patch lead wire in between the gyro and the receiver which will control how much gain is used. Plug this into a spare channel on your receiver uh, and have that channel controlled by a slider, a trim or a knob. That's it, that's the mechanical installation done. Simple. Now, the next step is to advise the 3E what position it's actually in, whether it's on its side, on its back, on its front, facing forwards, backwards, etc. As this will affect which of the three gyros inside of the gyro will actually control each of the axes. To do this, we need to plug the iGyro 3E into a computer through the uh, USB lead, or you can now use the app on your phone through the Bluecom adapter. Once connected to the computer or your phone, simply click and point onto the picture which best describes how your gyro is installed. Now, all that's left to do before going flying is to make sure that the gyro is correcting each one of the surfaces in the right direction. This is very important as obviously if it tries to rectify in the opposite direction all it's going to do is make the, roll, make the model roll, loop, 
stall. The gain channel that we've set up in our radio is gyro off at the centre and whichever way we move that off centre will activate either the normal gain which instantly rectifies any external influences or in the opposite direction normal and heading gain. This does the same as the, pre the previous version normal gain but will also try and help you keep your path so it will actually hold in that control input a little bit longer for you to try and keep you going in that straight line. To test the direction of all the servos move the slider onto full normal and heading gain and then simply move the model about. The surface should move in the same direction that you're moving it so if you lift the wing the aileron should go up, if you lift the tail the elevator should go up and if you move the tail of the model to the right the mudder should move right also. If any corrections by the gyro need reversing this is done by the button on the iGyro itself. We simply hold that button down for more than five seconds you'll see all the lights go out on the gyro and then just one will light back up again. If that's the channel that you want to reverse, simply press the button briefly and you'll see the lead change colour. That channel has now been reversed. If you need to reverse any other channels, press and hold the button in until the single lead that was lit up moves up or down until it reaches your desired channel and then repeat the previous process. Turn the model off turn the model on again, check again that all of the gyro corrections are correcting in the right direction and you're good to go. Start off with the gain slider on your radio set to zero. Fly and trim the plane with the gyro off and then once the plane is flying stable and set up and trimmed then move the slider slowly in one direction, ever increasing thus the gyro sensitivity until you're happy with how stable the model is for the conditions that you're flying in. If the model starts wobbling or oscillating, normally when flying fast, that's because you have gone too far, you've got too much gain and you need to reduce the setting slightly. To do so, once it starts wobbling or oscillating, reduce power and pull up. As soon as you do this, you're going to lose some airspeed and therefore it's going to stop wobbling. Once it stops wobbling, you can calmly reduce the slider back down again, just a point or two, just so it doesn't start oscillating or wobbling when flying fast. You can also fine tune each of the channels individually from your PC or app on your phone if you feel that one axis needs more gyro rectification than others. So you don't need to have all three of them linked to each other. You can have more aileron gain, more elevator gain or no rudder gain, whatever your model requires. I've been Martin Pickering. I hope you found this video helpful and wish you every success with your iGyro 3E by Powerbox Systems. Good luck and fly low.